Stanton is with us in Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Stanton, I understand you got to brag. By the way, folks, we invite people to call in and brag because there's very few places in America today you can brag about success. And you should brag about success because it inspires other people to do it. So, Stanton, tell me your story, man. Yes, sir. Um, really excited to be on the on the phone with you, Dave, and love the podcast. Um, yeah, I started my uh, general contractor in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia um, started the business about four years ago, and last year we did uh, just over sixteen million in sales, and I made a net profit of one point five million. Um, and then this year we're on pace to do almost uh, thirty million. Wow! Same kind of margins. Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll be probably in the 2.5 range this year. I hate it when that happens. Way to go, <laughs> man. How old are you? Yeah. I am just turned 37. Man, you are killing it. So uh, you're a GC. What are you building? Residential, commercial? No, it's all commercial. We do um, a lot of uh, K through 12 renovations, additions, municipal work, and also like self-storage facilities. Okay. Very cool. Good for you. Good for you. So you're going to do like... Thirty-five, thirty-six million dollars this year, and make two and a half million dollars net profit. Yes, sir. And doubled it in one year. And what were you the year before you did sixteen million? We did just over eleven. So we did two, seven, eleven, sixteen, and then we'll be over thirty this year. Okay. Did you grow up in the business? Yeah, I worked in construction through college. I studied civil engineering, um, and then that's really kind of where I got introduced to you in college. I started. The baby steps. Um, when I was in college, I had twenty thousand dollars in student loan. When I ran into you, and I was like, "All right, I got to get rid of that." So um, after I graduated, within the first year, I got that paid off, um, and then been debt free. Then we got a house. I attacked the house, got the house paid off, and I have four kids. So a lot of people looked at me with four eyes when I said I was quitting my job to start my own business. But um, now it's you know kind of being debt free and. Not having any debt was allowed me to do that, and uh, you know, I've always been entrepreneur-minded and wanted to do that, so I started the company, and it's been going well. So you started, because you'd followed us on the financial stuff, you started following the Entree Leadership Principles, too, then? Oh, yeah. I read read the book a couple of years before I started the company, and um, so much I learned from the book. I've been following the podcast ever since, and um, really love uh, and when uh the first episode I heard with you uh, doing the podcast, uh, I mean, I, I loved it with all the, the, the different um, posts, but really been enjoying it with you. But yeah, so many stuff I've learned from, you know, just from the book. And, you know, I think probably the biggest thing that I would say to our success that I learned from the book is just like how, um, and one of the reasons I really wanted to start the company because the last company I worked for didn't do this, but was just really, you know, the people are what make this thing happen and really caring about the people taking care of the people we've had people have been out sick and we paid them through that. And, and, uh, it's really seen returns because we have such a loyal team here, um, that's on board and helping me grow this thing. Yeah. It's amazing when you treat other people like you'd want to be treated, word gets out. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> and all of a sudden good people say, you know, that's a good place to work over there. They love their people. They take care of them. And then you can attract talent that way when you when you crap on everybody like corporate America does, and they wonder why they can't get good people. Well, that's why, because they know they're going to get crapped on. And so, absolutely. absolutely, man, you're killing it. I'm so proud of you. Very well done, sir. Very and, well uh, done. I also, have a, I also have a question for you. So I have um, three key leaders now um, on my team, an operations manager, a senior project manager, and then um, – a uh, pre-construction manager in the next few years i want to you know kind of appoint one of those guys to be my direct report and kind of have everyone filter down from there and just wondering what advice you would have to kind of build that person up into that position um as over the next couple of years um to be able to handle that um yeah i mean it's just that, developing bench depth is what it amounts to and developing your bench to where you can do that. Um, the big thing is anytime they, uh, you have the opportunity to pull them aside and mentor them on something beyond their current job on an issue that would be something you would deal with, just go, hey, I just want to take a second and show you this is the way I'm going to handle this thing over here. I know it doesn't apply to you today, but I want you to see how I'm going to handle this thing or let them sit in the meeting 
while you're handling it even. And uh, then you can start to telegraph to the team by handing a few of those things to them before they're given the title. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. and, and then it's kind of like the best succession plans in general. In your case, the best promotion plans are gradual. And then when you make the announcement, so-and-so is going to be the new vice president of operations, he'll report to me. The rest of the company is going to you know, funnel up through him uh, or whatever, whatever title you give them. Then when you make that announcement, no one's going to get whiplash. They're going to go, oh, I kind of thought he already was. Yeah. Because yeah. you've been kind of handing stuff over there, dropping stuff on him. He's been picking that stuff up with the idea that he started to look like that position already, even before you made the formal announcement. And um, then he will, you know, obviously he will have had the people skills to have earned the trust of the team before you do that. And then there's no political whiplash with the guy, you know, the other guy that's similar position to him that thought he was going to get it because he didn't think he was going to get it. And he'll already, he, if that guy's there, he will have already exited. Once he sees he's not going to get it by the way you're treating guy number one, uh, the, the other guy will bail, and you'll have to replace that position. If, he th- if he's a guy that wants that role and he sees he's not going to get it, that you're going to lose him probably. But that's, that'll be part of your process too. So very, very well done, Stanton. So gets out of debt from a civil engineering degree using the financial peace principles, plugs into entree leadership, treat people like you want to be treated, grows a business in just a series of years to last year being 16, this year being $35 million. I love this country. (laughs) I love what somebody can like Stanton can do. Man, what a stud. Way to go, man. Way to go. That's just impressive. Hey, guys, if you want to help us with this show, we would appreciate it. You can follow us. You can subscribe. You can leave a five-star review. Those one stars aren't helpful. If you don't like the show, just go somewhere else, for God's sakes. If you love it, leave us a five-star review. We need the help. And uh, share the show. Share the link. Click the share button. Uh, We're on all the different platforms now. Anywhere there's a podcast, anywhere there's a YouTube thing, we're there. And you'll be able to find us and just share it. Tell people to come in and join us and make a phone call over here at 844-944-1070 if you want to be on the show. And uh, we'll certainly work you in to the Entree Leadership Podcast.